Helping people is a huge part of my life. It's what I do every day as a doctor in my office. And um, I'm blessed to do what I do, and I'm blessed to live in the community where I live. And giving back to the community has always been important to me. Being part of the fire department is uh, the ultimate community involvement. What's more precious to the community than uh, people's lives, their property, uh, you know, their well-being? And being part of the fire department you know, is a real honor. And you get a real sense of pride when you put on this uniform or you put on your, your turnout gear. My community's given so much to me. I mean, they've been so supportive of our, of our practice. Um, patients come in and they, they entrust their health to me, their smile. Uh, as a child, I always was fascinated by the fire service. I remember as a Boy Scout uh, getting firefighting merit badge, and it sounds crazy, but I just remember that vividly doing that and just having this memory burned into my head that, boy, that was, that's just, these guys make a tremendous sacrifice. And to be able to give back and uh, serve that community in this capacity, it was just, uh, it's a tremendous feeling. As a child, I used to love to go to work with my dad. My dad had a jewelry manufacturing company and he would sell jewelry to retail stores and those stores would sell them to the end customer. And I don't remember how old I was, but I'm sure I was a little boy, seven or eight years old. And I vividly remember sort of standing at my dad's desk and saying to him, Dad, how come, how come people buy their jewelry from you? Why don't they buy it from someone else? I was just a curious kid. And he said that he doesn't ship a piece of jewelry out of his factory until he, until he personally had inspected it to make sure that it was perfect because he knew that if he sent it out perfect, his customer was always happy. They, they would never have to send it back, and their customer was always happy. And he said that that, combined with giving his customers good service, always being accessible to them and giving them what they needed, made them loyal customers. And he said to me, this is the secret to my success. I turn out the best product possible, and I treat my customers well. He goes, and if you do that, people will be the path to your door, and they'll be loyal customers. And I always remembered that lesson my dad taught me. In order to become a dentist, you have to go to four years of college and four years of dental school. I was able to complete college and dental school in six years by attending a six-year BA, DMD, or undergraduate and dental degree program in six years instead of the usual eight. I was one of only three students accepted to this prestigious program and the only one to actually complete the program. When I was in dental school, I worked in the summer as a bartender. And I'll never forget, I was a bartender in a country club. And um, many times the members of the country club would come up and chat with us at the bar during the day. And I was chatting with a woman and I was telling her that I was in dental school. And she said to me, you have to become a periodontist. And she went across the room and she came back with a gentleman. She held his, she had his arm in her arm. And she said, do you see this man? She goes, this man is my periodontist and he saved my life. Because when I went to his office, I had terrible gum disease and people told me I was gonna lose my teeth. And he treated my gum disease and here I am all these years later and I still have my teeth. He saved my life. And it sounds crazy, but this was a beautiful woman with beautiful teeth. I think she couldn't have imagined herself living the type of life she's living wearing a denture. And it really impressed upon me at an early age as a dentist what a difference we can make in somebody's life. I met my wife when I was a junior in dental school. I'm so lucky to have found the love of my life and to be able to spend all these years with her. My sister and her brother were classmates together and they set us up and we went out on a Sunday night and we didn't have the best date for our first date. My wife was studying for her physical therapy boards and as charming as I was, her mind was on her exam. So uh, we said goodnight at the end of the night and I said, you know, let a few weeks pass. And we went out a second time. We went to a pizzeria in Boston in Faneuil Hall. I still remember it. And uh, we had a great day together and uh, I just knew at the end of that date that I was going to be marrying her someday. She has all the qualities that I look for in a person. She's beautiful, she has a great smile, but she really has a great heart. Um, whenever we have a friend who's sick, she's the first one to bring food to the house. She's the first one to say, hey, can I do your carpooling for you? She's a tremendous mother to our kids. Uh, she gives 110% to everything that she does, whether it's you know, uh, running the house or or uh, helping with the meals or whatever she does, she always just gives 110% and really gives very selflessly. I remember my son being born in 1991 and it was, as anyone who's had children knows, it's probably the most fantastic event you can have in your life, how it just connects you to the whole circle of life, the chain of life. Seeing all the potential that child embodies and knowing what an awesome responsibility it is, you start to think about all the lessons your parents taught you and what those important lessons were. And then you think about setting a good example and how you're gonna instill those lessons in your children. And my son's just a great, a great guy. He's not a kid anymore. 
He's just a great person. He's caring. He's very sensitive to other person's needs. He's always willing to pitch in uh, and lend a hand. And he's so, so good natured. He's got my wife's kind heart, my wife's uh, good nature. And fortunately for him, my wife's good looks. My second child, uh, Samantha, was born in 1995. And uh, Samantha, in many respects, is a carbon copy of me. Uh, she's an excellent student. Uh, she works so hard in school. She doesn't stop studying for a test until she knows she can get an A or an A-plus on that test. And, and every test, she gets an A or an A-plus. And my youngest child was born in 1999, Bailey. And Bailey, in many respects, embodies the best qualities of both children. She's got a great nature. She's warm-hearted. Uh, she always has a kind word. Every report card in school, the teacher would say, Bailey is the most helpful child in class. She always helps the other students. She's always helpful, helpful, helpful. And I like to think that she got that quality from watching my wife and watching me help other people. I'm really blessed to have three great kids who are healthy, that do well in school, and that really understand what values are important growing up. My dad taught me lessons about precision and customer service. And my mom taught me the lesson of being a good listener. My mom's a great listener. She has the ability to listen without judging. And that's a skill that I got from her. And I think as important as the precision what I do with my hands is, my ability to listen to people and to hear what they're saying and to accept them and not to judge them is critical to my success as a periodontist in terms of helping them. And I'm blessed to have a, a successful practice that patients love coming to, that they love speaking about, that they love referring their friends and family to. And it's a blessing to come to work every day knowing that you're doing something that you love, that you're passionate about, and that you're really helping people, that you're making a difference in their lives. My staff is part of my family. My dental assistant, Ginny, has been in this practice longer than I have. She was a dental assistant for the, my predecessor in this practice. And it's so comforting for the patients to see the same faces year in and year out. When I first came here and walked through the door with the trepidation and fear, and I have to admit to being a coward, of previous years, uh, the staff welcomed me like well, they knew me forever. And then I met Dr. Scharf, who actually went through what he was going to do step by step. He treated me like another intelligent person who would understand what he was telling me. And he told me exactly what the problem was, what was plan A, what might be plan B, how it was going to work, what he would do, how long it would take. People who knew him said to me, go with his plan. He knows what he's doing. Well, my teeth are feeling great right now. They feel great, they feel strong. I feel like I can chew into a, a sandwich right now and not worry about my teeth falling out, like when you pull on it, bite an apple. I feel, they feel great. They're getting stronger and stronger, I feel like, every day. He's a model of continuing education and a model of updating and upgrading whatever technology is out there. He's always on the cutting edge. It's very important to me to um, refer my patients to a board certified periodontologist. Uh, somebody who has a lot of experience uh, in surgery is very important for me. Um, for the patient, they want to know that if I'm referring somebody, I'm referring somebody that I've had really good experience with and that they're going to be well taken care of and they're going to find that their experience in the office, especially Dr. Scharf's office, is going to be something that's going to make them very comfortable. Community service is so important, and it's a lesson that I want to teach my children. You know, growing up, my dad was always involved in community organizations. When I was a Boy Scout, he was the committee chairman, and the committee chairman is the person that really makes the troop go. I want my kids to have that lesson. I want my kids to see, well, when you grow up, it shouldn't just be about working and making money. That's important to do, but it's also important to give to charity, and it's important to, to give your time. One of my responsibilities in the fire department, in addition to being a firefighter, is to be an EMT or an emergency medical technician. And I remember one particular call, it was a beautiful Sunday afternoon, one or two o'clock in the afternoon, beautiful blue sky, beautiful summer day, uh, and the call came across the radio as infant choking. Um, and I was on duty that day, and we hopped into the ambulance, uh, my, my teammates and I, and we raced to the scene. 
we don't know what we're going to find. Sometimes it comes across infant choking and you have a perfectly healthy baby who's coughing and sometimes you roll up on the scene and it's infant choking and you have a blue baby who's not breathing. Um, and sometimes in the time it takes to get there, the, the child gets worse. So we roll up on the scene and it was the worst case possible. <clears throat> the mother was outside in the street holding the baby uh, and the baby wasn't breathing, the baby was blue. Um, and, and there's nothing more frantic or more emotionally charged than, than a, a baby potentially who's dying. This child must have been six or eight months old. Um, and my team and I were able to dislodge the object from the baby's throat. We resuscitated the baby um, and the baby, you know, pinked up again. The baby was okay. And then, um, you know, we drove the baby to, to the landing field. A helicopter came, airlifted the baby to the hospital, you know, to be checked out thoroughly. Um, and boy, we all breathed a sigh of relief when that call was over. Uh, and I remember, you know, going home after that call and kissing all my kids. And you realize how sometimes someone's life just hangs in the balance. You, you think that um, life is so durable, but it, it's really so fragile. I mean, here's a, here's a baby who was choking on a piece of hot dog or something, and um, what a tragedy it, it could have been if that baby lost his life, for, obviously for the baby and the family and everyone on the team, you know, we would have been uh, devastated. So that was a, a tremendous outcome uh, and one I'll never forget. I've been fortunate that I've had a lot of blessings in my life. I grew up in a family that stressed education and hard work and instilled those values in me. I was blessed with, with the intelligence to work hard and be able to do well in school. And I was blessed with great eye-hand coordination to be able to take a vision in my mind and create it with my hands. And I'm so appreciative of those blessings and I'm so appreciative of the lessons that my parents taught me growing up because I took those lessons and transplanted them into my practice. And I'm blessed to have a, a successful practice that patients love coming to, that they love speaking about, that they love referring their friends and family to. And it's a blessing to come to work every day knowing that you're doing something that you love, that you're passionate about, and that you're really helping people, that you're making a difference in their lives. One of my instructors in dental school had an expression. He would say, somehow dentists don't have time to do it right the first time, but they find the time to redo it. It never made sense to me. It just always made sense to do it right the first time. And in my own practice, I've tried to follow the lesson of my father in terms of precision. Whatever I do, I try to do it as well as it can possibly be done so that the patient is thrilled with the result so that it doesn't have to be done again, so that I have a happy patient, a happy customer at the end, who in the end is loyal to our practice and sends their friends and family to our practice. And that's really been my mission and my goal. My staff and I take tremendous pride in the fact that our patients pass dozens and dozens of periodontists to get to our office to receive the care that we give them. Our goal is to provide the best possible care and we take tremendous pride in that. When someone has a healthy mouth, they can chew well, they can smile, they can feel confident about themselves, they can socialize, they can eat whatever they want. We do more than create beautiful smiles here. We transform lives here.